So we have some great news, finally. I know Canadians have been starving for some great news, but we finally have some. Uh, before I get into that, though, I do just want to remind you guys to please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help grow the channel. And also, whatever you have uh, on your mind, whether it's an opinion or a question, please also throw that in the comment section, as I really do enjoy engaging with you guys through that um, through the comment section as well. So, the great news... Jugmeet Singh today at 1 p.m. said, The deal is done. The liberals are too weak, too selfish, and too beholden to corporate interest to stop the conservatives and their plans to cut. But the NDP can. Big corporations and CEOs had their governments. It's the people's time. So he has officially ended his coalition with Justin Trudeau. Now, unfortunately, before we get too excited, this does not mean that this automatically triggers an election. There does have to be some sort of a vote a bill that wants that Trudeau wants to be passed. If it doesn't get passed, it could trigger a vote of non-confidence or Jugmeet Singh could end up calling one in the future. That's probably not going to happen very soon, unfortunately. It would be great to have an election late this year, but Jugmeet Singh does need his pension. He will wait till at least February to have that election. And I would imagine once he calls for the vote of non-confidence, which I think will happen in February or March, we will have an election in either April or May, in my opinion. So he did. Uh, he just posted a quick video here. It's about a minute and a half long. So let's have a quick listen to that, and then we'll talk about the um, you know, any other news um, after as well. Today, I notified the Prime Minister that I ripped up the supply and confidence agreement. Canadians are fighting a battle, a battle for the future of the middle class. Justin Trudeau has proven again and again he will always cave to corporate greed. Liberals have let people down. They don't deserve another chance. There is an even bigger battle ahead. The threat of Pierre Polyev and conservative cuts from workers, from retirees, from young people, from patients, from families. He will cut in order to give more to big corporations and wealthy CEOs. The fact is, the Liberals are too weak, too selfish, and too beholden to corporate interests to fight for people. They cannot be the change. They cannot restore the hope. They cannot stop the conservatives. But we can. In the next federal election, Canadians will choose sure. between Pierre Polyev's callous cuts or hope. Hope that when we stand united, we win. The Canada's middle class will once again thrive together. In Canada, we take care of our neighbors. That's who we are. I've embraced that value my whole life. I'm running for Prime Minister because together we can and will stop conservative cuts. We can deliver relief and restore hope, fix health care, build homes you can afford, stop price gouging. It's always impossible until it isn't. It can't be done until someone does it. If we're together, nothing is impossible. And we won't let them tell us it can't be done. Big corporations and wealthy CEOs have had their government. It's the people's time. So, I mean, a lot of nonsense there is talking about, the oh, there's an even bigger threat to conservatives. It's like, sorry, Jugmeet, there's no bigger threat than you and Justin Trudeau. But I guess really the only thing he can do, because his supporters don't like the fact that he had a coalition with Trudeau either, right? Because Jugmeet Singh supporters also don't like Justin Trudeau. So they don't like, they're thinking to themselves like, we didn't vote for a coalition. What are you doing this for? So the coalition is broken. But again, unfortunately, we probably won't see an election until next spring sometime. That's my um, opinion. But it's better than waiting a whole another year. You know, it's like we, we deserved an election last summer, really. But OK, if we're not going to get one until the spring of next year, well, I'll take that over fall of next year. Right. So it's very, very good news as well. So uh, Pierre Polyev also chimed in here. And let me just see what he had to say. Uh, show more. Two years ago, Sellout Singh sold out his workers and signed onto a costly coalition with Justin Trudeau that hiked taxes, ballooned food costs, doubled housing costs, and unleashed crime and chaos in our once safe streets. Very true. In today's media stunt, Sellout Singh refuses to state whether the NDP will vote with non-confidence to cause a carbon tax election at the first chance. 
Sellout Singh has voted to quadruple the carbon tax to 61 cents a litre, a plan that will drive Canadians to food banks and grind our economy to a halt, killing hundreds of thousands of jobs. Sellout Singh did all of this after promising he would be an opposition voice. Canadians need a carbon tax election now to decide between the costly coalition of the NDP Liberals who tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs, and unleash crime and drugs in your communities, or common sense conservatives who will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. So yeah, I mean, Pierre Polyev's right here, right? I mean, we've seen all the crime, we've seen the immigration, the, all this, everything's expensive. And we've talked at this, you know, up, up, about this on this channel at nausea. So I won't get into that again. We all know the problems that we have here in Canada. We also all know, if you have some common sense, that Pierre Polyev is the only other option, at least for now. Conservatives usually do better with financial policies. The country usually does better. It's not perfect. But usually, like when Stephen Harper was prime minister, housing was cheaper and we were safer. That's true. That's a fact. We'll, not, we'll never see those prices again. However, we do need an increase or a decrease in prices. We need better jobs. We need, because we, we've seen what a 2.4% increase in wages in the last 10 years. I mean, that's insane. I mean, that doesn't even keep up with inflation, never mind hyperinflation, never mind the doubling of, of rent in, in, in you know, uh, the price of housing, right? Like you can never, like you have to work 60 hours a week. If you live on your own in the area where I live, so in Ontario, about an hour away from Toronto, if you want to live on your own, you got to work about 60 hours a week, most people. Not to get ahead, not to buy a house and save up, but to just to not drown. 60 hours a week at an average job just to keep up. That's that's too much work. Well, I don't want to say too much work, but it's it's not enough of a reward for your hard work. If you're working 60 hours a week, you're working hard. There's people who do more, I understand that, but 60 hours a week is quite a bit, especially if you're doing a physical job. That's a lot of work. You should be getting ahead. Not just, well, I got to do this and work every day of the week without a day off because if I don't, I'm going to not be able to pay rent. I'm not going to be able to afford food. And that's a really hopeless state of mind that a lot of people are in right now. That's got to change. And a basic average job should give you a basic average life. Overtime should get you ahead. It's as simple as that. But either way, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. I made my prediction of when we will have when I think we will have the next election next spring, April or May. But what about you? Do you think it'll be sooner? Do you think it'll be later? Do you think we'll have to wait all the way until October of 2025? I sure as hell hope not. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Also, please, again, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel. Uh, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Thanks again so much for watching. And I'll be back shortly with a new video.